Does the Bible say anything about current events? It certainly does. It's our focus to be culturally relevant and to communicate a perspective from the scriptures. As Christians, we should have a biblical perspective of the news and be able to share that perspective with others. Hello, I'm Rob Fields, Executive Director of the Leaders of Faith Foundation and co-host on the show with Pastor Larry Bird. We're so glad that you're joining us for today's news and biblical views. It's our focus to be culturally relevant and to communicate a perspective from the scriptures. We see so much in the news that grieves and saddens us to the state of our world, but there is good news that can come from the despair. What does Jesus and the scriptures say about some of these difficult and complex struggles in our news? Jesus of Nazareth shows his care for us and reminds us with these words, so don't worry about these things, rather seek the kingdom of God above all. Let us seek together a better way and work through the struggles in the news. Going back a few years ago while I was in DC, I met two amazing people that brought me into a conversation about orphans and foster care. I heard of people adopting and their personal stories, and you in fact even may know friends or families who have experienced working with children we consider as orphans. Do we really have a problem with children being in foster care? There are numerous questions surrounding this topic. Even in the midst of all the hardship and the pain, we can find the heart of God working through people to reach the orphans of our world. I'm delighted today to have on the show with Larry and myself, Jody Jackson Tucker, she is a wonderful friend. Uh, she was one of those ladies that I met uh, a few years ago in Washington and started that conversation about foster care and orphans. And she's one of these ladies that it's just contagious and you start to love children and she has a great heart. So Jody, welcome to the show and you're in uh, probably a little bit warmer area of North Carolina, but uh, we are delighted to have you on the show today. I'm so blessed to be with you, Rob. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to just uh, this conversation around orphans and foster care. Uh, could you go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and maybe even how we got connected to the little project that we're working on and really trying to make some changes in the foster care system? Sure. Well, my husband, Jerry, and I, we have a large family. We had three biological children. Then we adopted five children, and we have a long term foster son. So we have a large, blended and diverse family, and it's been a joy. And I was so privileged to meet you and see your heart for adoption and foster care and start collaborating with you a few years ago to bring leaders uh, into this issue and to see what we can do in our beautiful nation about vulnerable children that we have right here in America. Jody, what what motivated you to get involved in foster care and what, how did God work in your heart to get you uh, into this ministry? Larry, I grew up actually in a family with two adopted siblings, so I had that in my heart. Mm -hmm. And we had one daughter who had been adopted from the United States as an infant. But then in midlife, when we were just about to have an empty nest, my husband and I went on a missions trip to mm -hmm. Uganda, and we saw children living in orphanages, hundreds of them, mm -hmm. without love, without parents. And we just couldn't come back to our comfortable cul-de-sac life um, with empty bedrooms in our home. My husband felt a word from the Lord that there was nothing about empty nest in scripture. And thankfully, we just followed his leading and we filled our empty nest back up and it's been the best decision we ever made. So our children were adopted, our younger children were adopted as older children and were particularly um, passionate about people receiving older children as well. I, I can really identify with uh, how God moved in your heart. About a year and a half ago, I was in India and visited an orphanage. And there was 
There were 23 children, but there was one little girl. She was about seven years old. And when our eyes met, it was like neither of us could look away. And it was like this mm. little girl was saying, I love you. Will you take me home with you? And ever since I pray for that orphanage, I think of that little girl. And my heart was so touched. Yes, then you understand. Yes. This is what the Lord does, and he just gripped our hearts for this issue, and it really um, has been such an incredible, an incredible blessing to welcome these children. Yeah, I think, Larry, uh, we might have gone to the same orphanage because I remember that experience in India, too, and just wanted to say, how many can I bring home at that time? Uh, Jody, you know, when we talked, uh, and I've heard so many times about orphans, and we use that term, especially in a global aspect, then I was asking you and talking with you about foster care. What's going on here in America? And we hear so many of adopting overseas uh, and, and what's taking place here in America. But what would you say would be some misunderstandings about foster care in general? Yes, here in our nation, we have many children waiting for families. The last few years have been very difficult, particularly with uh, the COVID crisis, and our foster care system is being overwhelmed with children who have needs right now. I talked to a woman last weekend who's parenting a girl who had been sleeping in the government office on the floor for three weeks. This is how much of a need we have right now for foster homes. You know, the Lord said in Psalm 68 that he sets the lonely in families. He said in James 127 that pure and undefiled religion is to care for orphans. But in our culture, we've grown to accept that our government is caring for the vulnerable children here in America. And as Christians, that's not really all right. It's not the government's job to raise children. It's our job as the body of Christ. So that's why we just try to advocate to remind people that this is God's word to us. Yeah, you know, and I would have to say I was guilty uh, even as a pastor that, uh, you know, a couple would come in and they would ask, you know, we're considering with expanding our family. And the first thing I would do is refer them to, okay, well, what is the county? What are the programs and agencies out there? And I know that's one of the projects that we're trying to work through with seeing the, the church that has, was really much engaged in government, less engaged, how it flip-flopped through the years. And now it's all government responsibility in, in many ways. And so we're trying to engage the body of Christ in the uh, foster care process. Anything to, to speak towards that? Yes, absolutely. And thinking about the numbers, there are uh, children in every county in America that need families. And sometimes the numbers can be overwhelming. For example, Rob, in your state, in Pennsylvania, there are 3,000 uh, approximately children right now this morning that we are um, on this show waiting for families, 3,000 children. That number may sound overwhelming, but there are 11,000 plus churches in Pennsylvania. So if only a, a half or a third of those churches receive just one child, we would have no waiting children in Pennsylvania. So the church is really the solution to this problem. We just need to awake the church and uh, call them to see that these children are waiting for them. Jody, why do you think the church isn't more passionate toward the orphans? What, what has happened to the church? I think we've grown comfortable in going to church on Sunday, sipping some coffee, hearing some good worship, hearing some preaching. But the New Testament church was hands and feet. Uh, historically, Christians uh, were the ones who cared for orphans. Children were brought into families. And I've, uh, through my work, traveled to places in the world where whole villages have come to Christ. And in those places that may be seen as very poor, there are no orphans because children are immediately received into those families when they lose their parents. But our culture has moved away from that uh, we've grown uh, complacent, and we're missing a beautiful blessing that's part of the gospel and being part of God's family. Amen. Jody, we need to take a one-minute break, but this is very interesting. 
And folks, we'll be right back. Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. We are talking with Jody Tucker, and we're talking about caring for orphans. And Jody, again, we are just so grateful for your ministry. And uh, Rob and I both have some more questions for you. So, Rob, what's the next question for Jody? Yeah, uh, Jody, uh, one of the things that you've been working on, and there's something that's called the orphan spirit. Um, what would you uh, kind of elaborate a little bit about that? Because a lot of it's involved with. Uh, what God's heart has to say on it, but what would you consider the orphan spirit here? Rob, this is a biblical concept. The orphan spirit is what develops in the heart of uh, a child or even an adult who doesn't feel loved, who doesn't feel wanted. When we don't know um, who our family is and when we don't know the, the Father God, we develop this orphan spirit. Uh, of being unloved and unwanted. My own daughter, Agnes, lived in an orphanage most of her life. We adopted her when she was 14 years old. It was a Christian orphanage, and she was taught the Word of God. But she told me something I've never forgotten. She said one night she was so lonely. She wanted a family so much. And she left her bed at the orphanage, and she went out and laid in a field and looked up at the stars. And she said to the heavens, God, if I am your daughter, if I am your child, why does no one come for me? Wow. Wow. That's powerful on that. And I know that's led into, uh, you wrote some lessons uh, in the scriptures of the Bible in regards centered around our role as second mothers. Uh, can you share a little bit about the, the, the spirit behind that? Yes, we need many second mothers and second fathers. When I uh, went back uh, to seminary a few years ago, back to school with all my other kids who are in college, I began going through uh, the scriptures more deeply, and I was just amazed to see that the Lord has put in his story uh, from the beginning to the end stories of foster care and adoption over and over again. It's in his word. It's part of his story. He He's a God of redemption, and he gave us so many examples of foster care and adoption. And I believe he did this uh, to show us that this is part of how he puts families together and what he's called us to do. And Jody, in uh, Galatians chapter 4, where it talks about how God sent his son Jesus to be our savior, there's that whole concept of being adopted into the family of God. So all of us who have received Jesus Christ, we've repented and received him into our lives. We are adopted children. So we have that sense that God has taken us and brought us into his family. And I know that you've got an Old Testament story that you'd like to tell about adoption. Could you share that with us? Yes, well, there are many stories in the Old Testament. If we think of some of the great biblical characters, great leaders of God's people, uh, we know Esther was adopted by Mordecai. We know Samuel was raised by Eli. One of my favorite stories, the earliest leader that we have in Scripture, is the great leader Moses. Well, when what we see in this story is that Moses had a birth family, that his birth mother, because of the terrible situation she was in, released Moses, hoping that a woman of privilege would raise him. And Pharaoh's daughter, that woman of privilege, raised Moses. And he went on to become one of the most important uh, people that God had a destiny for in building his kingdom. And that makes me think about all of the waiting children in our nation and around the world. There are Moseses, there are Samuels, there are mm -hmm. Esthers that are waiting. And if we don't step forth as the people of privilege, we are not fulfilling God's call. Who are we missing? Who will never step into their purpose because mm -hmm. we didn't fulfill the gospel to these children? Amen. And Moses, we remember, even Moses started out as a basket case, right? He was a basket case. But look what God did and how God brought exactly. him. Exactly. Look how God used him as a mighty leader. I think the, the saddest day of Moses' life was when he was not permitted to go into the promised land because he yeah. disrespected the Lord and he struck the rock when God told him to speak to the rock. 
Wow. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing it's a story. Great story. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for sharing about Moses. Yeah, and Jody, uh, going into the New Testament, uh, we see Jesus uh, speaking so much about with orphans and the children. Uh, what are some things that uh, kind of come to light when you see the scripture speaking about it in the New Testament? And, and I guess also take it to the next level, how would that transfer to us today? What would be some like takeaways to help us in understanding about foster care and the orphans from the mind and the heart of Jesus? Well, Rob, we know Jesus loved children so much. He said, let the little children come to me. One of my favorite scriptures is Matthew 18:5 where he said, whoever welcomes one child like this welcomes me. When we welcome a child into our home, we are welcoming Jesus. What a privilege, what an opportunity. And even from the cross, Jesus' last act was an adoption. You may be thinking, I mean, the adoption of us into his heavenly kingdom. Yes, he died for our sins and he gave us Father God. But what else did he do right before he died? He looked down from the cross and he saw John and he saw Mary and he saw their broken hearts. And he said, John, this is your mother, Mary, this is your son. The last act of our Lord was an adoption. He made them a family. And this just gives me so much passion for older children. All of us are never too old to need a mother and a father and a family. Yeah, well said. I love that. I'm glad you brought that out because that is one of those passages that has touched my heart in many ways. You know, those that may be watching uh, that are experiencing whether, you know, hey, I don't have a family. I don't have an identity. I don't know where I belong. I don't have a mother and I don't have a father. And just that, that words and that invitation of Jesus come, I'll bring you in. You become now part of my family. Talk about hope, even in the midst of despair and in the most uh, tragic experiences. And we know, and you, you could speak to it also, even in our foster care system, of how many children are passed on from family to family, and that feeling of what it does to them emotionally, what, what's happening to them uh, as they're going from family to family and not having a place and that sustainability too. Yes, we all want a permanent family. We want to know that this is where I belong. Uh, you hear the term forever families, and because our government, uh, like most bureaucracies, is not efficient, uh, children do move from family to family. There's a lot of chaos in the system. Foster families are meant to be temporary families, but this is not the cry of a child's heart. And when we move children from place to place, when they don't feel loved, when we allow our government to take them from their birth parents, uh, for good reasons most often, but then not ensure that they receive a permanent family. We have um, done something really terrible to that child's heart. And I believe the solution to this situation is the church. Many children who grow up and age out of foster care uh, feel very unloved and face many troubles in life. Imagine your own children being 18 years old. On the day a child turns 18, they age out of foster care with nothing. There's nowhere to go on Christmas or Thanksgiving. There's no money for college. There's no one to help you buy the first car. There's no one to walk you down the aisle. Mm -hmm. This is the plight of these children. And so we know the church can do better. Everyone in the church can do something to come alongside a child that needs a family and needs Amen. to find love. Amen. Jody, we're gonna take another one minute break and then we'll be back. I know you still have some more to share with us. So thank you so much. Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. On the program today, my co-host Rob Fields and I are interviewing Jody Tucker, and we're talking about caring for orphans. Jody, welcome back again to this segment of today's news and biblical views. And could you share with us a little bit of some of the costs and expenses that are involved when people do foster care? I'm so glad you asked me that because a common misperception is that uh, there's a lot of cost involved in fostering or adopting a child from here in the United States that's in foster care. 
And fortunately, our government does subsidize this process. So actually, it's free to become a foster parent and it is free to adopt a child from foster care because so much subsidy is available. And even if it weren't free, what I always think about for other kinds of adoption, like international adoption, you hear people say, oh, I could never spend that to adopt a child. And I think, what did you pay for your car? What is the price on a child's life? Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I, we drive old cars, mm -hmm. but we are missing nothing because we have a large and glorious family. So it's, it's, um, it's available to anyone who is interested. And if you go through your local county system, you can sign up to foster or adopt a child and that process will be subsidized. Yeah. Jody, uh, I know that we've been working with trying to put this in front of some of the governors and at the National Governors Association. And, and part of it, uh, it's of interest of leaders uh, in government because I say the domino effect, those that age out or the effects of like opioids, suicide, all those things and how much of it stems from foster care. Uh, can you speak a little bit towards that? Because I think it also helps us in understanding the solution. Uh, but yeah, some thoughts that you have. Yes, very sadly, the government system that we have is not working because as we mentioned earlier in the show, when a child ages out of foster care without a family, when they've developed this orphan spirit of feeling unwanted and unloved, and when they don't have the resources and the help to enter adulthood, many children uh, find their way into depression, uh, the homelessness statistics are shocking. Over half of children are homeless uh, within the first year. They uh, don't become educated. Only 5% of foster care graduates end up going to college. They end up um, in harm's way, ending up in the prison system, uh, ending up with um, unwanted pregnancies, just many things, even trafficking. Many children who are now being rescued out of trafficking, uh, we find got lost in the foster care system. So our government system is not working. The government is not designed to raise children. And so we're so fortunate that people like you, Rob, and others of influence in uh, Washington, D.C. have been advocating with our nation's governors. It is both biblical and smart for governors to speak out, to call the church, all people of faith, to come alongside government and open up homes for these children because in that we are building a more loving and a more functional society. And, and Jody, a, a problem like orphanage or orphans is becomes so overwhelming at times that we think, well, what can I do? You know, I'm just one person, but we can pray, we can reach out, we can be informed. We can visit orphanages. I think if people would just visit an orphanage, their hearts would be so stirred, they'd be crying out, oh God, show me, what can I do? How can I help children? Yes, and some people may not feel they can go overseas to an orphanage, but you can contact your local foster care system right in your county mm -hmm. and find out who are the foster families. There are probably people fostering and adopting in your neighborhood or in your church, and you're not even aware of it. You know, having gone through it myself, a family that starts to foster or adopt a child, it's just like bringing home a newborn, but people don't realize that. We needed clothes, we needed casseroles, we needed somebody to mow the lawn. We brought home three grown children from Uganda, but it was like having three newborns in our house because everything was new to them. Mm -hmm. And so retired people in the yep. church, young people in the church can come alongside as mentors. Amen. Uh, that's a There's great, so much great. we can do. Our yeah. motto is everybody can do something. Amen, yeah, Jody. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah. Rob, what are your concluding sure, thoughts? Sure, sure. Uh, today, you know, we've been talking with Jody about an amazing effort to help orphans and those in the foster care. And again, thank you, Jody, and many others who are helping the little children. James says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. 
it's apparent that God's emphasis is not on religious ritual, but on right living. God the Father stresses, look after orphans and widows, referring to one's conduct, and keep oneself from being polluted, referring to one's character. What is pleasing to God is helping others in need, like the orphans. How's God working in your heart today? Is He stirring your heart in the matter of knowing Him? Have you ever really considered what Jesus said, what He did, the example He lived? Jesus was put on trial for His claims to be the Son of God. He died on the cross for the punishment of our sins. And on the third day, could not, death could not restrict Him. And He rose from the dead victoriously. Only the Son of God, being Jesus, could do this. It's not enough for us just to know this, but we need to respond and put our faith in what He did it was for you and it was for me. Will you say this prayer to God right now, confessing these things? God, I know I have sinned against you. I ask for your forgiveness because of what your son Jesus did on the cross. And by faith, I am trusting and following you. Is he stirring your heart in the matter of helping others? Looking for ways to love others can be challenging, but truly possible through his divine abilities. As we draw closer and learn more about Jesus, the Spirit produces fruit such as love, joy, and peace. Maybe He's stirring in your heart to help the orphans and the least of these. Thank you for being with us on today's news and biblical views.